What is up guys, Mr. The Reverts here, and today I want to talk about the future of COD Competitive, COD Esports, and what this scene will look like come next year. Now, maybe this could be some news to some of you guys, but if you don't know, I'm a huge supporter of COD Esports. I think it's very entertaining, and it can be one of the largest and most profitable esports game out there. However, over the past few years, the scene just really has not taken off as expected. And if I'm going to be honest, I think it's partially because the marketing of the platform isn't all that great. Like, the competitive part of the game just does not really appeal to the more larger casual player fan base, which are the players who play for maybe a few hours out of the day each week, if that, or maybe even a select few days out of the week. But Activision has announced something that I feel could very well take not just the COD eSport franchise, but the entire Call of Duty scene to the very next level if done properly, which is franchising the league across the United States or maybe even across the world. So Activision did announce this a few weeks ago during their investor call. And there were rumors going around last year that this would happen, which I did make a video on. But again, this is actually confirmed and it's going to happen next year for Call of Duty 2019 and into the foreseeable future. Basically, for those of you guys who may be confused on what franchising is, there are two other esports out there that I'm aware of who have their own league, which are the Overwatch League and League of Legends. Um, but pretty much think of it like the NBA League. Let's say they're are the ones that are starting up an entirely new league and there's 30 spots available for teams to join in the league and then a company comes in like Mountain Dew or Doritos they decide to buy one of those spots in the league well then they're tasked with organizing a team management an arena for the players to play or fans to watch literally the whole nine yards it's pretty much just like the the regular NFL league or the NBA league um, but then that team Mountain Dew decides to buy um, a spot and then let's say they become the Los Angeles Lakers um, But in the case of the CWL League the Los Angeles optic or the Los Angeles face heck if they wanted to They could change the name of the team So all of the teams in Call of Duty Esports that you may know of right now like United phase optic envy They may not even be called that same name going into next year after COD franchises also one thing we need to consider is after a company or organization buys their spot, then they actually hold on to that spot in the league for as long as they want to. It doesn't matter if they have a losing record or the team is just terrible. As long as they have a spot in the league, then they can compete. Now, franchising has proven to be extremely profitable for investors who buy these spots because they can make so much more money than the 20 to 30 million dollars it takes to buy a spot and they can make money from the sponsors other investors merchandise sales tickets to see the teams play those are just a few examples but basically like i said the cod franchise esports can be very successful and prosperous if it's done properly but as for some of the concerns out there mainly one of them is fans not wanting to support a team when they were fans of that team before because of course they may not want to support a team for another city like for example i'm an optic fan um but if they're not going to be a part of texas which is where i live and say they move to Los Angeles, then it's going to be hard for me to support that Los Angeles Optic team when there is a Texas Envy team. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, by, by region locking a team, it could create a lot of rift with the fan base for that similar team, but it could also become very successful in terms of the viewer base and support for that team. But there will be those fans out there, like I said, who will find it a bit difficult to support a team from another city with a franchise model. Amateur players could also not get the best of support from a franchise model because it makes it even harder for these guys to break it into the professional circuit. Like, there's so many questions and so many issues that franchising can raise. But again, if it's handled properly and with care, then franchising can become very, very, very successful for the game and professional esports. But guys, these are my thoughts. Please tell me yours down below in the comments. Do you guys support the franchise model? What are your concerns? That kind of stuff. Again, please tell me down below in the comments. Also, drop a like on the video if you guys did enjoy. And thanks for watching. I love you all so much. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.